is David Faustino. Hello, this is Andrew Chalmers, the writer and doctor in Doctor Who Dark Journey. This is Dr. Steve-o. Uh, everybody, this is the Cavernator. This is Inspector Gadget. Hey, what's cracking, y'all? It's your boy, J-Rock. Good evening, folks. This is James Duval. This is Jeremy Taggart. This is Kim Possible. I'm Chris Holden-Reed. Hey, this is Pat Mastriani from Degrassi. <laughs> this is the evil Dr. Bad Vibes. Again, this is Messy Bear. And this is more from X-Men. Hey, this is Andrew Gazess. This is Sean Gunn. Hi, this is Robert Carradine. It's Tammy Stronach from The NeverEnding Story. Hey, it's Zach Callison. Hey, I'm DJ Jenny Rock. And I'm Neil Young. I'm Commander Shepard. Ralph Garman here. You're listening to Droids Canada. You've made an excellent choice. You have chosen wisely. Warning. Listener discretion is advised. That means there's a lot of fucking swearing. Hello. <laughs> Right, I'm here at Frightmare in the Falls, Con Stranger Droids Canada. I am here with Darren of Booze, Guts, and uh, Blood, Guts, Blood, and, guts booze. and Booze. Blood, Guts, and Booze. Now, I am massively out of my element here today at Frightmare in the Falls. Now, can you give me a quick overview on what Blood, Guts, and Booze is about? Now, with that title, I can kind of think about it, but I want to hear, hear it from you. Yeah, it's uh, about three buddies, uh, Frank, Bobby, and myself. Uh, we sit down uh, in the basement, review old horror films. We uh, relate to it. Uh, sometimes we uh, end up freestyling with some wacky conversation. Uh, sometimes very personal uh, issues that uh, come to the light of day. Sometimes embarrassing, but uh, if you check it out, it's pretty informative. You know, Frank knows his stuff about uh, all kinds of film. Uh, yeah, it's a great time, and we just sit there and drink and uh, have a blast. So the booze does play a large factor in oh. the show? It's, uh, yeah, it definitely influences uh, our reaction time, that's for sure. <laughs> so, so then I take it you have been a fan of horror movies your, you know, for your whole life? Long time, yeah. Uh, Frank and I actually uh, lived together when we were in our early 20s, and we had a massive VHS collection together. You know, and we'd watch those every day, all the time. Been a fan for many, many years. Now, are you one of those people, once a movie's done on VHS, you always have to rewind? Or do you leave uh, it, like, unrewound in the thing just to piss off the next person who wants to see it? Uh, no, I'm, I'm usually pretty kind. I rewind. Kind and rewind. I remember that. I used to never, ever rewind going back to the old well and Blockbuster video days. I'd be like, screw you, Blockbuster. I hate you and your overdue fees. Wow, that's a statement. That's, I've, I've that's, never been overdue. That's hardcore, man. That's yeah, hardcore. Man. So um, now, you know, being uh, I would, you know, I would call you much more than me an expert on horror films. If you had to select your top two horror films of all time and your top two worst horror films of all time, what would that be? Top two? Oh, wowzers! Because uh, you can never have just a top one. Uh, no, you can never have the top one, but uh, maybe. Um, Say, the thing. You know, I'm a big fan of the thing. See uh, that I haven't watched it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, judging by our the difference in our yes, style here. Um, I, here at Frightmare, I'm literally <laughs> wearing a flower like print shirt and light colored clothing, in amongst everyone wearing black. Oh yeah, you're very. Uh, you stand out a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. I was thinking about wearing a fluorescent My Little Pony shirt, but oh, yeah, uh, I think I don't want to get beaten up. <laughs> Ah, you'd blend right in. I've seen a few. All right, so so you're gonna say the thing is one of your top ones. What about your like the worst, the worst thing you've ever seen? That like this is the biggest train wreck I've ever seen. Oh boy, uh, we watched one actually on our show. Uh, I don't, I can't even remember the name of it. It was so bad. Uh, something to do with Twilight or. Uh, you mean, you mean like oh, the terrible. the sparkly uh, the sparkly vampire one? No, 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 not nothing like that. No, no. See, uh, I I was forced to sit through that with my wife. She wanted to see it because you know she's that age group that loves that crap, and I literally ruined the entire movie for her. I uh, that's that's probably a good thing actually. You no, know, right? like every single time there's a creepy look that was given, I would send the creepy look to her. And she's like, stop it! I'm trying to watch the movie. So yeah, I just try to ruin it. So <laughs> when I don't like something like that, now um, yeah. now for your criteria. For a good horror film, what do you look for in, like, an epic, epic death? Uh, you want a, a pretty good character build-up. You want to be able to relate to the character in some way, right? Mm. So that you actually feel for them when uh, they lose a limb or a decapitation occurs. Uh, a good death. Something interesting, uh, usually not typical. Uh, a beheading is always nice. Or uh, an, Yeah. 
Why not? A simple beheading. I'm trying to think of, with the exception of Ned Stark, I don't know many beheadings that I have seen. Really? That's right. Well, yeah, because I'm that guy who doesn't really uh, doesn't really watch the horror films right, now. Right. So, uh, with your show, what is the best way for people who are you know members of the Droids family to be able to find your show? Uh, you can check us out on YouTube. Um, we have an Instagram account, uh, Face Facebook. Uh, basically, just type in blood, guts, and booze, and uh, bingo, bango. Bloods, guts, and booze. And I also see here, you are here with the Tattoo Studio as well? Yeah, Sleepy Hollow Studios. Uh, Bobby T, right behind you there. He's promoting his, his work. Really good stuff. Displayed along the table here. And where is that Tattoo Studio? That's uh, also in Welland, uh, on uh, on East Main Street. Oh, okay. That's the one at the corner, right by the bridge. Is uh, that the corner of the bridge? No, no, no. It's by the bus stop. By the bus stop. Yeah, across from the bus stop. Ah, uh, okay. I think, I think I know where that is. Now, with your show, how often do you have episodes that come out? Is this like a weekly thing that you try to do, or is it kind of a bi-weekly, monthly, you might, you know? Uh, every few weeks or so, maybe every three weeks, every two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, do you have any plans on what movies you will be reviewing coming up? Uh, it's actually, it's, it's all random choice. So we have a, a whole selection of different films. Uh, we're encouraging people to give us ideas on what uh, they want to watch. So it's basically all at random. It could be a really good film. It could be a sour film. Whatever happens, we just kind of right on the spot. Do you find more uh, enjoyment out of some of the more indie, hokey horror films? Or do you kind of find more out of the big mainstream, like we're going to have a, a large budget and scare the crap out of you? Uh, I find the hokey, kooky, low-budge films... Uh, quite enjoyable to watch and to review uh, one for the fact that not many people know about it so it's a great way to uh, promote them and it's uh, a laugh I, I love I love over the top stuff so any low budge films usually got some really over the top kills in it or uh, characters in it so now how boozed up do you get during the shows uh, there's one or two shows where I don't even remember what happened uh, Did you start complaining yet no, you haven't started complaining. There, there hasn't been one one complaint yet. Now, we have also now been joined by another member of the Blood, Guts, and Booze family. Frank, how you doing? Good, man, good. Thanks for uh, having me on this uh, audio recording. No problem. <laughs> so so I, I did. I have to pose the same question that I pose here is, is top two horror films all time, oh. top bottom worst horror films all time. Oh, man, that's so difficult. That's so top difficult to do. Top two best. I'm an Evil Dead fan. So I gotta say, what well, Evil Dead 2 and I, I'd have to say the trilogy. I, I can't pick one of them. So I, I will select the trilogy as one. I am now recently just been introduced to uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead, Ooh. which has been turned into my show, Dan vs. Evil Dead, where I watch and I get freaked out. And I even have a t-shirt which is just my face on Ash's body with my dumb mug and it's actually quite funny. Now, um... How do you think the TV show Ash vs. Evil Dead pairs, uh, fares in comparison to the original Evil Dead movie? I thought they did a fantastic job. Fantastic. It was all the original creators, so it's very uh, true to the original. Um, they even reference the original, the clips of the original, in the TV show. See, I've just recently gotten to a, a point where um, Ash's uh, ex-girlfriend's head is in a vice. Uh, and it started to, it kind of it did freak me out. I'll be honest, it kind of freaked me out. Now uh, the other guy on the show, Todd, he was he was saying that that's the actual like original character who played that, or he thought it was. It's not the, the original, original actress, not but the it original? Is, it's they had because the original actress would be like 50, 60 maybe now. So and they may wanted to make her look like she did back then. CGI. No, it was just an actress with a... It was just an actress with a severed head stuck in a vice. That's right. That looks very much like the original. Never in my life did I ever think I would be mentioning a head in a vice. It's useful. Oh. It's useful. Yeah. You need some head, right? <laughs> God, that's a, there's a good... No, that's a good, that, that, that's a good wrestling reference there. Al Snow. Good time. So, uh, yeah. So, I'm here with the guys from Blood, Guts, and Booze. Yep. Blood, Guts, and Booze. Uh, only thing I'm really familiar with is the booze part. But uh, I'd like to thank you all for your time here today at Frightmare on the Falls. And uh, you guys have yourself a good day. Thanks for uh, joining us. Thanks for the interview. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Yeah, thanks, uh, Take care, guys. Cheers.